Hello, this is Adam with Dream Made Productions. This video is made possible by the very kind donations of viewers like you. Thank you. If you are in a position to help this channel improve quality and grow, please visit my Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash dreammadeproductions, linked below. It is the 31st century, and mankind is once again at war. The battlefields of the future are dominated by huge robotic war machines known as battle mechs. Hello, Future Adam here. Let me first apologize for not getting this video out when I had planned to. I recorded the audio to this when I was in Virginia. And the only thing I had was my old USB headset. I started editing, but then got sidetracked yet again with more friends and family wanting to come over plus work. And Jenny was not feeling the best, so things got put on the back burner. Please uh, forgive any oddities in the audio since, like I said, I was using old equipment and was traveling. I hope you still enjoy it. So, being home brings back the memories. Most good, a few not so much. Current events have led to me finally getting my things together. My gaming collection, for the most part, all under a single roof with a few items still MIA, hopefully to show up at some point. This is a sweet yet bitter event for reasons I will eventually talk about. But in the meantime, I thought it would be appropriate to continue my story, talking about my path through Battletech. For anyone new joining us, it may help to go back to the beginning. A few things might come up. I have linked the first video in this uh, old man talks about his life series here. Wherever YouTube puts the thing. At any rate, we left off on something of a downer. Someone I loved very much had left my life in, well, one of the worst ways they possibly can. The resulting damage to my admittedly already very strained psyche was just too much. Thinking I was the problem, I did my best to correct said somewhat imagined deficiencies in the get to jobs and work until you start seeing things from lack of sleep kind of way. Determined to A. Fix failures that obviously, through very rose-tinted glasses, forced before-mentioned loved one to cheat and leave. B. Punish myself as much as possible for said failures and hopes God or the universe or fate or whatever would balance the scales, allowing happy days to return. C to repair finances abused by the 2008 collapse and failure to find work in my field, perhaps the only legitimate reason on this list, and to be honest, failing those to, well, work until either I uh, was unalived in the process. During this financial restoration, self-destruction, insanity, someone sat on the phone with me listening to the ravings of a madman. How this came to be is a bit of an interesting story. You see, I know too many Jennies. First, there is my cousin Jenny, a very nice lady you will hopefully meet in the not-too-distant future. Next there is Jennifer, or Jen, a friend of my ex who cited is too strong a word. Let's say did not agree with her sister from another mother's actions. 
and would lead to meeting the lovely lady fans of this channel have met. Anime Jenny, or Little Lightning Bunny, depends on what persona she is feeling like today. Finally, there is another Jenny, or Jen, or whatever, that is a friend of Jenny that will play a role in this story. Plus all the other Jennies and Jens I have met in passing or at work. Ugh. Just keep in mind for this part of the story, Jen is my ex's BFF. And Jenny is the anime Jenny whose voice has graced this channel a number of times already. Anyway, back then Jen saw what everyone else did. That I was not only a fool, but at the time was also being a self-destructive one. After a time, she encouraged me, and by that I mean pestered, to create a dating profile and message 20 women that would be a decent match. That was hard. I mean, gaming and anime has come a long way since I was a kid, but even today remains less than mainstream. Out of the 20, I got three replies. One was, no thank you, fair enough. One was, let's go with less than pleasant. And one was Jenny. Having been through something similar, she was honest, almost to a fault. No pulled punches with her. She will let you know where you stand but at the same time understands pain and suffering in ways only people that have been broken by it do. She sat up with me on the phone. <laughs> Working at night has its advantages. You can't sleep, but with an earpiece I could sneak around talking as long as no customers were around. After two and a half years, I finally walked away from a job, rediscovering life and games. I played my first game of Battletech in years, losing to my buddy Chris in his very first game. Oh, you guys will very likely be meeting him too soon enough. I had abandoned my self-flagulation only to be left somewhat adrift. With most of my friends gone, or very busy with their own lives, gaming was still as rare as gainful employment. I had visited Jenny in Michigan several times during those years, and we had grown close. Jenny's health problems are as numerous as they are frustrating, and she needs assistance. And she asked me to move in with her. I had never really left my home before. Sure, I had taken little trips. Even my college time had been <laughs> a little over an hour away. So moving 600 miles away was a scary prospect. Yet I knew if I did not, I would likely regret it later. So I packed my things and left for the great frozen north. Well. The great frozen north for a southerner like me, anyway. I figured others my age had left on their adventure to find their employment fortunes. The 11 hour drive this time weighed down by a car absolutely stuffed to the gills. And this is where Battletech finally comes back into our story. I could not pack everything, especially on that first trip. My games had to go into storage, and I could only take what I really, really wanted to play. And so I grabbed my core 3.5 D&D books, and of course, Total Warfare and a tub of Battletech stuff. After settling in, I was delighted to find a small game store 10 minutes from Jenny's house. They sold mostly magic cards, but did have a shelf of other stuff, including a Battletech box set. Jenny was right when she said there were opportunities my little home city did not have. It was not long before I got my first professional job, uh, somewhat in my field. It was a whopping $14 an hour, 
but when you come from an $8 an hour world, well, that's quite the improvement. I started to campaign hard for people to play Battletech with me. I printed flyers, hung out in the game shop when Magic the Gathering was being played, did my best to recruit from work and random people I met. Good side, I sat in on a cool Shadowrun game. Bad side, well, apparently gaming night for most people in the area was like Tuesday and I had to work. I was confused by the weekend not being game day, but fine, whatever. This was going to be hard, but getting a Battletech game going always is. I did find a co-worker who was willing to give it a try. He brought his girlfriend with him, and I had them play through my little training mission, playing against each other to learn the very basics, followed the next session by a two-on-one against me, so to put into practice what they had learned. I lost, as was the design, by that much BV to overcome. Sadly, I could tell my co-worker's GF was humoring him more than she was into the game. To her credit, she paid attention, and I think she enjoyed herself at times, but was just not a gamer. They did not return for the third game. Things would devolve from there. Sadly. The little place closed, leaving a long drive to the nearest stores, two in opposite directions, and I ran into the same problem I had at so many other stores. They wanted Magic players and Warhammer players, and not much else. It was clear where this was going. Plus, Jenny went through a, let's go with non-minor surgery and I had to take care of her more than normal for a time. Work ground me down too. The company I was working for started having problems. I could pile on here, but let's just say they were not managed well. And on top of that, a major customer just stopped paying. This was not my employer's fault. One of the few times problems weren't, but compounded with their before-mentioned less-than-stellar leadership, it was a blow I don't know if they recovered from. I went from being overworked, really overworked, to, we need you to work, but we can't really afford to pay you kind of situation. At first, I tried to compromise with them, getting a part-time job and kind of being on call but that got messed up when the owner wanted something and they panicked, trying to call me while I was at my other job. Going so far as to call my other job and ask for me, wanting me to help them over the phone. The other job, who had many issues of their own, were at the time still very thankful to have someone with my education and work ethic fixing well, years of, uh, let's go with important accounting tasks being neglected. They offered me a small raise and full-time employment. So I returned to the financial services world where I would stay trying to get someone, anyone, to play some good old battle tech. Now, I know what you are thinking. Adam, why not have Jenny play with you? <laughs> I have tried for over 10 years with no success. Jenny is an anime nerd, and while the two often cross over, in this case, she has her own world of anime, video games, manga, and figures. Battletech, D&D, and other tabletop stuff is just too nerdy for her. Although, she has enjoyed a few simpler games and was the one who wanted Escape the Dark Castle. So, there is maybe hope. As management at my job shifted, 
I went from being their golden boy to the customer service manager's target of frustration. My manager at the time was pretty laid back, especially for an accountant. The best kind of, I don't care as long as you get the work done, kind of manager. The CS manager, well, she liked to micromanage. If she liked you, she liked you. If not, well, to give an example, I got written up for wearing the wrong socks. Yep, we were required to wear dress socks, and one morning, I just grabbed a normal pair of white athletic socks and put them on without thinking. This massive oversight had to happen, of course, when my accounting manager was on vacation, leading to the great sock debate. The CS manager pounced, taking the opportunity to do the whole official write-up for being out of uniform and all. Admittedly, I had left my jacket on before because I was near the door and gasp. It was not a suit jacket, so clearly my white socks was a massive violation. As with any disciplinary action, another manager had to be present, and in the loan office manager's defense, he rolled his eyes once he heard what I was being written up for. Long story short, the CS manager was just below the CEO, and was her personal friend. Despite my manager's attempts to smooth things over, I saw the writing on the wall, but held on until I found something better. On the plus side, it was early 2019, and that meant the Catalyst redesign box set was out, and I had the money to buy it. The new and current Battletech A Game of Armored Combat is a nice set, good minis, nice art, okay price. But I admit, I was disappointed. The prior set came with so much more. Good old cat 3500B had spoiled me, and I couldn't help but see the new set as being a step back. It has grown on me, but given the choice, I'd rather have CAT-3500B reissued at a hundred-ish dollars than Armored Combat. Hmm, maybe a compromise. Hey Catalyst, can we get a game of Armored Combat Deluxe? Anyway, whatever. I grabbed up the new box set as well as the beginner's box and a few extra to give out as Christmas presents. By this time, I had been living in Michigan and returning to Virginia for things like Christmas. <sighs> and was missing out. Kids in the family were growing up fast. <laughs> Still are. And being the self-serving uncle that I am, I found an excuse to wrap up a starter set for 10-year-old boys whenever I could. <laughs> this year my mom had a very Dune Christmas with a Dune board game and card game. Oh well. At the end of 2019, Jenny and I stayed in Virginia for a long visit during the holidays. I was not working at the time. Things had gotten so unbearable at work that when I was offered an upcoming position elsewhere, even with a small pay cut, I took it. One added benefit, or so I thought at the time, was that the job did not start until late January or early February. That meant I would take a month off, go home, visit my family, spend time with Jenny, catch up on sleep, and devote time to learning more about videos. And here is where... Well, you come in. To rewind a little, what 
would become Dream Made Productions began in the summer of 2019. To rewind further, in 2007 I was faced with a choice. A job I hated that was handing out pay cuts like Capellans hand out nuclear strikes to periphery states. I had discovered YouTube and saw what people were doing. While far from predicting what it is today, I knew back then that YouTube would be something. Passion and talent was on display in ways that Hollywood was starting to shed. I wanted to join in. But, well, I had no idea. Younger viewers may not understand, but things were different back then. To put things into perspective, I knew about video cameras, sure, but I did not see my first one in person until I was in my late teens or early 20s. The age of looking up a YouTube tutorial was far away, and I had no idea where to start and no money to buy even basic equipment. I did what I thought was the responsible thing. I went back to college to get my business degree, but I promised myself I would return to it. Returning to our story, well, I suppose I had talked Jenny's ear off in to that point seven years that she had finally told me to just start making the stupid videos already. I started small, learning the very, very, very basics, watching YouTube tutorials on open source video editing software and learning to do very basic sound editing. Now I will tell on myself here, those first videos, well, they were basically just me dinking around trying to learn what to do. Then in the words of Final Fantasy VI, and on that day, the world was changed forever. The news had talked about it for months, but it was not until things got over here that it became real. I'll keep this brief as to not upset Big Daddy YouTube any more than I already have, but the world stopped, and so did my job offer. The position I had left my maddening but somewhat secure job for was delayed. Delayed indefinitely, then canceled altogether. We were all scared to death in those days. For me, triply so. As a kid, I had asthma, which affected my lungs. Plus the bad news. Since I had resigned from my last job, unemployment was out of the question. When it became apparent this was no two or three week deal, I had to do something. For months I looked, but you know, for some reason no one was hiring. Finally, I got a temp job at a chemical bottling plant. I was back to $10 an hour, doing hard physical work while trying to wear a mask that always got bleach smeared on it. It was an eye-opening experience, how the plant workers were treated versus how the office workers were treated. I will say this, think the person at such places. Treat them with as much respect and kindness as you can muster. If not for them, things would be very different in our world. On the plus side, I had started work in my videos. Dream Made Productions posted its first video, February 12th, 2020. The Amateur Hour podcast was my first attempt at anything real, putting what little I had learned at that point to work. 
I posted my now very embarrassing podcast videos for a while until the labor and long hours got me to the point where I just couldn't keep up. The plants union did force them to not keep temps. They had so many months, then they either had to offer you a job, making you part of the union, or they had to let you go. I had mixed feelings about falling into the second category. I don't like failure, but at the same time, I was glad to be out of that place. I drew the oh my god unemployment for a while before I found part-time work, followed by full-time work later. Still, the crazy nature of those days led me back to YouTube. An early experiment with a video was me playing a Battletech game inspired by Ouchie's bat reps and others. I quickly turned that little game into Battletech Battle Reports Episode Zero. Then in November of 2020, I returned to Battletech, posting a basic lore video, followed by the Planet of David campaign. If you want a good laugh, go back and watch that stupid podcast and those early Battletech videos. You can see how far I've come. It feels like so far, and yet I can't help but feel like I have so far to go. Here is where I gush a little. I really did not think anyone would watch my videos. In those days, most sat with less than 10 views. Episode 7 of the podcast to this day has zero views. Not even my mom watched. <laughs> But as things have grown, I cannot express my gratitude to you enough. You see, I'm a storyteller. Very debatable if a good one or not, but definitely I am a storyteller. Growing up, it was hard to find people to share my stories and ideas with. I mean, after all, if you spend all day writing the story, and everyone refuses to read it. Did you really tell a story at all? This community has been a pleasant and humbling surprise in ways I cannot stress enough. Each and every one of you has taken time from your day to watch a battle report, learn a little lore, or just listen to the opinions of an asshole. You have been supportive and I thank each and every one of you in person if I could. As I posted videos and learned more and more, I could do more. The world was finally starting to recover. And so was I. An employment offer came in right when I needed it. And that position has proven to be the most pleasant and profitable I've ever had. In times past, I had to sign some, well, I'll be frank, just ridiculous stuff to find employment. I don't show my face because for a long time, I just couldn't. I'm not trying to be all mysterious or anything. I signed contracts or agreements that said I could not do any commercial activity outside of my job. Others that said I could make no public statement of any kind without first submitting it for review, including social media posts. Personal social media posts. <laughs> the links that some jerks will go through. Treating a freaking Facebook post like a fucking CNN interview or something. <sighs> Anyway, my current employer is much more laid back, but, well, let's just say I have plans about when I'll appear on camera for you guys. I won't just be a voice forever. Unable to find a game during lockdowns, 
I further developed my own command deck system to make games faster, but also more interesting to play against myself. Look close in most of the games I played against myself. That will hopefully be changing. I could go into the clan invasion Kickstarter, but again, world events really prevented me from going out and <laughs> I'll admit it, the results brought a tear to my eye. Wow, Battletech was still popular. If only anyone would leave their homes to play it. The Mercenaries Kickstarter surpassing even the clan invasion's amazing performance. It is an exciting time to be a Battletech fan. Which more or less brings us to current day with one more little thing. Lately, I've been forced to make a hard choice and one with no good answer. I've mentioned many times that a move was coming and it's underway and nearly complete. I will be returning to Virginia to assist my father. My dad has been the one solid, stable force in my life and he is tired. I will be splitting my time between here and Michigan with Jenny until we can figure a way out of this mess. One benefit is that now I will have dedicated space to film, edit, and create without being crammed into corners or leaky basements. There will be an upcoming series of videos documenting some changes that are coming, along with introducing you to the friends and family who have agreed, given into my begging, been tricked, blackmailed or otherwise roped into assisting with the channel. So much to do. But one thing is for sure. My Battletech, now our Battletech journey, will continue as long as I have a voice to speak, eyes to edit, and a story to tell. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to entertain you. And as always, I hope you enjoy the battle reps that are to come. Hello, this is Adam with Dream Made Productions. Thank you for watching my content. It really means a lot that you have given me the chance to entertain you. If you would like to support the channel, please visit my Patreon at patreon.com slash dreammadeproductions, linked below. Also below is a link for PayPal, or links if you would like to send crypto, if that's more your thing. Please know any amount that you give will be cherished and used to upgrade equipment and improve the channel. You can also help the channel by subscribing, turning on notifications, liking, commenting, and sharing my channel with anyone you think might be interested. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you enjoy the battle reps that are to come.